uh, good afternoon and so, uh, excuse me, sorry for the delay. Um, as my, so my name is Savid Vira and uh, I'm going to speak about uh, my work, uh, uh, research that I've done about uh, a decade ago in the uh, British Mandate Archives uh, of the Antiquities Department. And uh, today it's I also plan to go back to them and to other archives because it's part of my PhD that is dealing with um, actually collecting all the archaeological data from the Temple Mount um, that um, from all the archives and uh, from uh, private archives and, and uh, from um, all sorts of constructive work that took place also in the last uh, decades uh, that I managed during the years to gather lots of information. And as you know, the Temple Mount uh, has never been excavated, um, and um, and uh, although it's about fifth, a fifth of the old city uh, area, um, it's a fifth of the old city area. Um, if you in all the archaeological maps of Jerusalem that show um, all the ancient uh, architectural remains that. Uh, uh, remain from the uh, uh, early antiquity, uh, it's a blank square. So every piece of information that comes from there, um, and, 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 on the other, and on the other hand, um, there's so much research about the Temple Mount because it was a, a, the most central place here in antiquity, uh, and uh, all the information we have is from the 19th century. Uh, um, I mean, all, uh, in those days, the, the scholars could uh, survey the site and, and, and map the site, and so we still base our map today on those uh, maps and uh, all the uh, systems that we officially know about, and there's many more. Uh, 49 systems are from the work of, of uh, Wilson, Warren, Sheik, and others, uh, uh, and, uh, and it's not all of them. Uh, but th those, that, that was the last time that these systems were, uh, were really examined and, uh, and measured. And, um, but others were uh, discovered later on during, um, uh, discovered accidentally during construction work. So as you see, this just, just is the question of where exactly to place the, the, um, the, um, the square uh, uh, sacred present uh, uh, from the second temple period that is mentioned uh, uh, in the rabbinical sources as a 500 cubic square so many uh, suggestions and theories uh, there is, and this is why each one of them is based on, on five months of information. So this is why um, um, retrieving more information is much more from the archives is very essential uh, to, for the study of the Temple Mount, and it's lacking today. Um, a major work was done uh, by uh, Shimon Gibson and, and uh, David Jacobson uh, on the PEF archives. And David here speak, spoke about it already, um, and uh, and I actually understand that they did some more. They found more more uh, archive that they didn't study, and they found they're going to publish more very interesting information uh, 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 soon. Um, uh, my my research was complementary, but by, by studying the uh, British Mandate archives, and. Uh, The, now the information from these archives, uh, we can divide them to um, three types, which are photographs, uh, inspector reports, and uh, sketches and plans from uh, supervisions or even excavations. There were two excavations on the Temple Mount during that period. Uh, small tile excavations or minor excavations. And uh, the information that we receive from these uh, uh, from these documents, uh, some of them is was never published was never published before. It's completely unknown. Um, some are complementary, and they add more information of what we already know. And some give us more information about the, all the background and the administrative and the, and the politics around uh, uh, certain events. Um, so I'm focusing on the main, on the main two, th two, two, uh, two things, which, are, which is new archaeological information. Um, and the big question is, OK, so many times the only thing you have is a picture. And uh, 
So first you have if uh, you have to open it to tell the caption that gives the information and tells you where it is. Uh, sometimes you just have to recognize where it is and, uh, and by the context of the file, what date it is, it, it, it was taken. And uh, also, um, um, and then in the picture itself, you have to sometimes try and do some uh, elimination and, and stratigraphy by just uh, uh, looking at the different elements in, uh, in those pictures. And the pictures are, are high quality, so uh, they're pretty clear, most of them. Sometimes it's impossible, sometimes it's partly possible, and sometimes things are very clear, and, and although there are completely new information. Uh, but unlike, I mean, every excavation uh, 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 in this land, you have to go back to the, uh, uh, if it was excavated before, uh, 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 during the British Mandate period or the Ottoman period, uh, it always, uh, 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 a good advice to go and check the archives of the, of the earlier excavators, but when you go through those archives, these are archives of, of um, scholars, researchers, archaeologists, or non-archaeologists, but they are research-minded, and it's much more easier to, 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 to retrieve information from those documents. But when you're speaking about inspections or just or, or construction work, this is a, a bigger challenge, and, um, and especially things that were discovered uh, accidentally and um, um, so uh, the story begins uh, with uh, two major earthquakes that took place in 1927 and 1937. Um, and uh, after the earthquake of 1937, um, the, oh, the, the, the roof of the Laksa Mosque was uh, demolished and, uh, and the aisles, the, the central aisles and the, and the eastern aisles were also demolished. Uh, and they had to replace them and reinforce the columns of the mosque. Um, Robert W. Hamilton, who was uh, the um, director of the antiquities department in those days, he um, um, I'll go back and I'll say, according to the British law, uh, the, uh, the antiquities law cannot be enforced in holy places. So. Um, so the whole ability of Robert Hamilton of to inspect over there, to do any kind of work, was dependent on his relations with uh, the Muslim Waqf, uh, uh, who actually was the um, uh, um, Yazam, I don't know if you the Yazam, the, the, the entrepreneur of these works. Um, I, I, if I remember well, it, it, the, the, the contractor was even Jewish did this work, and, uh, and most of the Laksa Mosque was replaced in, in, in those days. It took, it was four, four years that Hamilton came and documented the, those works, and he was even allowed to conduct a few sections uh, uh, under the floor. His main interest was the Islamic periods, and this why, for this reason, he actually um, wrote a whole and did a whole work on, on the, uh, all the history, structural history of the Laksa Mosque, and he showed the different phases. And uh, in these sections, he managed to um, um, reveal the earliest floor uh, of the Laksa Mosque, for marble floors with marble floor slabs. This is from the earliest phase of the Umayyad period. And, um, um, and, um, and, and the, the question is what's b below? Now, it, it, it hardly gave any, any information of what he documented from below that floor. And, and in his book, it gives all the information uh, in a and, and, and clear way. Uh, he, he has uh, maps of the, of, of, of the mosque and, uh, and he has numbering, and another map, he has, number, uh, he has numbering of the peers. And in the captions in the um, archives, uh, he refers to those numbers of the peers. This is how it was easy for me to know where each picture was taken. Uh, but in the archives, you can see, you can see uh, major, very large pits, uh, sometimes even going deep seven, eight meters under the Laksa Mosque. Um, and you can see in those pits uh, rich architectural remains. Uh, uh, you can see the, the top side of, of uh, uh, vaults 
and, and other uh, uh, major wars, and uh, the, uh, the, the, these wars, uh, actually this, this uh, over here, this is more clear, this is the vault, uh, it's not very clear in, 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 the, in the picture, but from the 80s, uh, I'm not going to speak about my work in, uh, in the Antiquity Authority uh, 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 archives, but in the 80s, in the 80s, um, a very large um, underground structure um, uh, with um, uh, something that resembles maybe even Solomon Staples uh, uh, was um, was recorded by inspectors uh, that uh, went into inside the Temple Mount and under the Lakta Moth through the double gates there was a secret passage and and, and uh, there's a whole hole over there with uh, many um, columns and, and vaults and connects the double gate passage to the triple gate passage. And I believe that this, this is one of the vaults uh, from, the, from the top side. Um, uh, but uh, this is just an example of, if you want to really retrieve archaeological archeolog information, what do you do with pictures like this? Okay, you can see the, uh, several phases and you can see the location so you have to take all the pictures and actually maybe with the GIS uh, and map all the walls and try to do, see the different phases and see if you have get any patterns. Uh, now I'll go to the more clear things that were, that were found in, in those archives. Um, so first you can see here a picture of um, a system with uh, stairs going down the system. And the system uh, was uh, at was plastered and there was some kind of a uh, barrier wall, a separator, a separation wall. And over here, this, this staircase is cut. Uh, but trying to imagine it, that it goes all the way over here. Now, in the same location, it's, it's, it's the location of this of this uh, system uh, is right under the um, north uh, east um, corner of the uh, porch outside of the Laksa Mosque. And Hamilton in his book speaks about this system, but he doesn't supply, give, give any pictures of this system. And he calls it a, a late Roman a, a, a water system. And, and, uh, and, uh, but today we know that all according to following Ronnie's PhD, that all the uh, plastered systems with stairs going down, they are the ritual about mikves. Uh, so we're speaking about the typical Jerusalem uh, mikve uh, under the Aqsa Mosque. And, uh, Warning, and uh, fix me if I'm wrong, you uh, notified two, two other uh, 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 systems uh, as, as mikvahs also. You missed only, you forgot the question mark. Where? To the, to the left, to the this right one? of the S. Mikvahs? I, mean, ah. I, I suggested. I'm ah. not sure. Okay, <laughs> now the thing is, uh, they are in the same. Uh, if, if, uh, you also said that there was some kind of a path over here and. And, and from both sides you have the mikvahs, and you can see it in the same uh, uh, axis, and also it's, a, it's apparently also on the same level. Uh, very a very interesting thing that was found over there were uh, six sections of mosaics. Uh, and these are um, these mosaics for under the, under the earliest phase of the Lakta Mosque. Uh, and you can see this structure that has this mosaic, it, it, it probably existed at least maybe 50 years because it has patches and, and, and fixes and in one phase it even went out of use. Uh, and, and here you can see all the, all the sections. Um, what's a uh, Byzantine mosaic doing under the Laksa Mosque? Now you could say maybe this is the early Islamic because you had the same artisans in, in, in the early Islamic period, but it, it, its orientation is a bit different. It goes outside. Um, the ancient mosque was 19 meters uh, shorter, so it also extends out of the uh, uh, even out of uh, uh, out of the earliest mosque. Uh, the scales, these scales, point east, like in visiting churches. Uh, and uh, 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 when I, I won't get into the details of the mosaic, when I when I look for a mosaic that had all the same all the motives in one in one carpet. Uh, in, in, uh, in one in one frame, uh, uh, the only place the only place I found that you had all of them uh, was in church of, in church of nativity, uh, in the central nave, and this uh, mosaic dates to the fifth century CE. 
And also, on the Temple Mount, you can see lots of architectural remains from the Byzantine period in secondary use. Also, in the sifting project, from the dirt that was removed from the Temple Mount, we find lots of, uh, we found about 400,000 mosaic tesserae tubes. And, and um, so you can say maybe this was thrown to the garbage, but I also did a different uh, work about refuse pits. Mosaic tubes are not thrown to the to garbage, they're always recycled. And, and uh, um, so, but, but the, thing, the problem is, according to the historical source, uh, 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 according to uh, the research at least, um, and the, the Muslim historical sources, the Temple Mount was a garbage dump in the Byzantine period. Uh, and, and the assumption is that the Byzantines didn't want to contradict Jesus' prophecy, that not one stone would, would remain upon another. Uh, so today we're not sure that this was the concept in those days, and, and maybe part of the Temple Mount was constructed, uh, and maybe it was very, for a very short uh, period. Uh, and uh, I do think that still the, the, the Dome of the, uh, the Golden Gate was founded in the Byzantine period, and, and today this, the research is going back to this initial uh, uh, dating. Some researchers are, are suggesting this because it was suggested later on that it was all early Islamic. And, uh, and uh, there's also other, uh, I think also in the Medva uh, 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 map, I think uh, there's a structure that is, uh, appears near the Golden Gate, and, uh, um, and Safrir once, uh, Yoram Safrir, the point of, uh, later Yoram Safrir said that, that, that uh, he suggested that the um, monastery of Mizar de Tulot, the Monastery of the Virgins, uh, I, I don't remember the, the exact term, uh, he suggested that it was in Solomon's Stables. Uh, so uh, we're still looking into this. Another very surprising thing was this tunnel that was discovered under the southern eight edge of the, of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And you can see uh, two sections, uh, two p pictures from this tunnel, about 15 meters long. Uh, and the beginning uh, uh, begins with some uh, debris up here. And you can see a lintel with an inscription. Over here there's lots of dirt. When you go further down, it's more clear and everything is poured in the rock, except the, the, the roof, you have these slabs that a bit, a bit resemble the, the slab that uh, uh, Ronnie and Ali Shukran found on the, in, in the Swiss channel of in the city of David. And uh, um, what is this tunnel? Uh, um, I won't get it, I don't have time, but, but, but uh, if you do elimination, I don't think we can date it uh, any later than the Second Temple period, and and uh, and uh, could be a hidden passage. Uh, um, uh, this is a lintel. The, the inscription is very is not clear at all, so we couldn't decipher it. There's two. Now, it's, according to the captions, uh, it said that uh, this tunnel is under the double gate, at the entrance near P two and three. Now there's another two other systems that also appear also appear over there that say that they're under the double gate, um, and uh, and this is an example. Of what do you do with this kind of picture? Okay, um, there's so many elements over here, and, and you don't know exactly where it, you know the general area, but where the entrance is, and and uh, and the, it says in the according to the caption that uh, in this caption. A little caption, it says that it goes down, uh, you go down through a, a manhole. Uh, yeah, also, I didn't know how to orient it also, but eventually I reached a conclusion that it's according to the caption, this is how we should look at it. Um, and uh, uh, here you can see a manhole, and uh, this is called system B. Uh, there's no location, but, it, but this picture appears right after the other picture. Um, I won't get into the, all the ideas and the suggestions because I don't have time. I just end with with um, uh, just say a few words about it. This is uh, this is out of context, but it was found secondary use over there by Hamilton. But you can, you can see a Roman center is probably part of a frieze of uh, maybe a Roman temple that uh, was near the Temple Mount or inside the Temple Mount. And also the Roman period is also a big question. Now, why Hamilton didn't publish all these all these things? Um, well, he has one. Very pe uh, peculiar uh, uh, paragraph in his uh, book, and he really uses. Uh, uh, he says that no, 
no notable, uh, there's an absence, uh, notable absence of all traces of monumental building of the Jewish period. Now this is, in all other parts of the book, when he speaks about the Jewish period, he speaks about Iron Age, Early Roman, Herodian, suddenly he uses this uh, term Jewish period. I think this is like, a, we call it in Hebrew, uh, lip tax that he had to pay to the work for allowing him to do this research. Uh, and, um, Otherwise, I have no explanation why he just ignored all and never published these, these things. Um, just, uh, I have two more, three more minutes. Rafi, shall I? I could end here. Okay. Uh, just an example. Uh, over here, you can see this structure from the uh, Crusader period. It was uh, about the, the, the al Mosque. Uh, after the earthquakes, it was demolished in 1938. Uh, it was used as a workshop of all sorts of things and also for creating a, a, a glazed tile to, to the Dome of the Rock. Uh, and there's a whole report that appeared in the archives of the demolishment of this structure. And it gives all the information of all the material, the different plaster and, and, and tiles. And uh, now it seems very really dull and boring. But for me, as, 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 as someone who's researching the debris that came out of the Temple Mount and from the eastern section where every, all, all, all the Everything was discovered over here, over there. It really helps understand the different uh, 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 material that we have in different plaster and tiles, and when it was uh, renovated and when it was uh, 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 discarded. Um, so there's really valuable things over there. Uh, another excavation, and this is the last thing that I'm going to talk about, uh, that is completely unknown, <laughs> is by uh, uh, Jones in 1947. Um, there was some renovation near the eastern staircase of the base platform. And he, and apparently in the archives, there's a whole, where is it? Ah, here it is. There's a whole report of this excavation. It's a, uh, although it's only a, a, a one and a half page, but it gives all the details of the different levels and what he found in each level. And th there's, a, there's a, 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 a barrel vault inside with four four levels, and it speaks about the different uh, refuse in, in, inside, and, and it, it dates this to the, um, the earlier phase to the Ayubic or Mamluk period, but this means that the vault, uh, 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 it, uh, it wasn't constructed later on that that period in this vault, and according to also the, the walls, the retaining walls, I, I don't have time to explain, is probably from the same time of the retaining walls of the race platform, and this could really, this could, uh, could date the whole retaining walls of the race platform of the Temple Mount. So this is just an example of, of, uh, of how much, uh, how hard archives are so valuable, especially for sites that you hardly have any uh, uh, archaeological information from within, uh, from within them. Uh, and thank you to Gabriel um, Bakai, who gave advices, and Sylvia, that really helped you uh, a decade ago. And Peretz Ruven, who actually gave me the whole idea to go and examine those archives.